Onika, what's the worst medication you've ever taken? That's easy. Epival. It gave me a raging rash all over my body. Anywhere you could imagine there was a rash, there was a rash. And I remember asking my mom, why is this happening to me? And she told me God was just trying to give me a thicker skin. <laughs> I got that. It was, it was wow. bad, guys. That. It was really, really bad. That was, wow. that was mom's answer. God giving you a thicker skin. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Onika. And JR. And you are dishing with Dainty Dish. How you doing, JR? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's it's a well, we're recording this on a Saturday morning, so I just came back from hot yoga. So of I'm course. Feeling, I'm feeling very good right now. Loose? Very very loose. Very loose. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh what's going on with me uh, this week? Uh, nothing much. I'm still working, so I'm still shopping at Longos in case anyone's of course. Wondering, in case anyone's wondering. That Longos life. <laughs> oh, Okay. So how are you doing? I'm doing well. I had my fourth class for RAP this week, Wellness Recovery Action Plan. Um, it was a really, really good class. We actually did a little stint at the end. Uh, we did Taekwondo. And I've decided I'm going to take up Taekwondo. <laughs> okay. Yes. It was very empowering. Um, it was a very, very empowering uh, class. Um, it was just self-defense and like a couple different things. So there's a place close by where I live. Um, it doesn't cost too much. So I think I'm going to take that up starting next month. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Um, I reconnected with my therapist this week, my new therapist. Um, she seems okay. She seems... I'm liking her vibe. Uh, may I be able to walk all over her when I want to? Possibly. But we'll... Because you know sometimes in therapy, like, you just tell them what they want to hear. And I'm trying so hard not to do that with this new girl. But... Doesn't that know. defeat the purpose of going it to therapy? It totally defeats the purpose. Like when you just, I don't know, I just feel like I don't want to like miss appointments. I want, I'm seeing her for the first time, like full session on Tuesday. We had a very relaxed session with my social worker this week. Um, but she seems pretty, she seems pretty cool. I confess to her that sometimes I BS. Uh, I have a BA and BS. And I told her to watch out for you it. You told her you have a BA? You should a tell you have, you have a PhD. PhD honors degree uh, in BS. And I, t- I told her to watch out for it because it happens, especially during the season where I make excuses. I don't want to do things. You know, I'm not feeling too hot. So I want to make sure I do that um, standing appointment every single week. And I'm really excited to get started again in, in my therapy. So that's what's been going on with me. Work is work. You know, it is what it is. Doing that every, seems like every day. Um, but yeah, nothing much else. So today is? Today is World Mental Health Day. Yeah. Well, on release day. On release day. It's yeah. going to be World Mental Health Day, um, bringing awareness to mental health and the stigma. Um, and it's our All Kinds of Crazy Wednesday as well. And we have a guest with us today, John. Please introduce yourself. Oh, hi, I'm John. How are you guys? Good, John. Good, good. Good, John. Um, that question at the beginning of the the episode, what's the worst medication you've ever taken? Probably Seroquel. Um, I just find it's way too sedating. kind of turns you into a zombie and makes you non-functional. Now, uh, it's generally given to people, you know, who have extreme mental illnesses and need to be heavily sedated. So, uh... In my present state, I'm on, you know, uh, a much weaker kind of uh, moderation dose of a, a, a newer medication called paliperidone, and I feel like I'm very stable on it. Okay, good to know. So before we get into like all, all the medication and stuff, we want to—I guess—we want to like dive back. Yeah, and, let's and dive do, back. Let's. The whole purpose of this is all kinds of crazy. So before we do that, let's just say that we've decided to really. Stop being doing this half ass. <laughs> you know what? This this is this is my fault, guys. I'm gonna tell you. I'm just gonna be honest and real with you. Um, I think I've been scared of mental health a little bit. I think I've been a little bit fearful of covering some of the topics and issues that need to be covered. And I've kind of hidden behind other issues, other topics that we've covered over the last like forty some odd episodes. Um, but 
we need to bring the focus back to what's real and what's important to me and that's advocating for mental health um that's bringing people like john on the show to talk about their story and to really again stop that stigma uh i want to make sure that people know like mental health is it's not my entire life but it's a huge part of my life that i feel like i haven't really shared with you and today is the first day because john's known me for two years we've known each other from way back when back in uh the hospital my home hospital so john truly truly knows me i'm not saying the guests that we've had in the past haven't gotten to know me um but they weren't in my sphere of influence and they weren't in my circle and now i'm bringing someone from my circle into this uh uh podcast to to talk about his story and to really share where he is currently at yeah, I just want to say, like, yeah, I've seen Onika at her worst, and, like, I've seen her at her best, and, uh, yeah, she's doing very well and uh, pretty stable, you know, she's working, um, going to classes, like, she's doing great. Thanks, John. Thanks. And I've seen John at his worst and currently at his best. Um, as I said, we were in hospital together. Um we used to i'm gonna bring up loki and and or odin and, and idris that's what we used to call each other when we were in the hospital norse gods um that's john's persona but he'll get into that a little bit later but i wanted to talk to you john about your story about your journey you know where have you come from you know where have you been and where you think you're going basically so let's start with um the younger years so what was what was the younger years like for your childhood growing up Okay, um, yeah, so basically uh, my parents were dealing with the divorce and uh, I, I, was, I was living uh, north of Toronto in Markham and uh, I was going to like, you know, a Catholic high school so there's a lot of stigma around, you know, like um, divorce and like not seeing truthful your partner because like I was in a very Christian uh, kind of setting and uh I, I moved past that in my later years but uh yeah so basically um i had uh, i grew up with a learning disability uh dyslexia and that kind of that kind of uh was difficult because like you know i was in special ed but i wasn't like you know at the, the bottom tier of special special ed you know like i was I, uh, with dyslexia, it kind of comes, like, you know, a bit of intelligence, like, different kind of thinking. So it was kind of weird. Like, I needed the help, but um, I just felt like it didn't fit in. Like, I didn't fit in with the, uh, you know, more normal people, and I didn't fit in with the special ed people. So I was just kind of my own dude uh, in my early years of school. And, uh, yeah, so, like, there was a lot of, it was kind of a broken home. Uh, my sister was a bit abusive towards me. Uh, I would take it out on, like, school kids because it was always bigger and stronger. But I eventually moved out of that, and I, I became a pacifist kind of early on in my life. And, uh, yeah, like, so, um, can I go on? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Your teen uh, years, all of it. Talk, so, talk so basically, um, my family was homeless for a brief stint. That was very traumatic. Um, I uh, I got into high school, and in grade nine, I got I was a grade A student. I was getting over ninety percent in every class. I was doing really well. I was on the honor roll, and then uh, in grade ten, uh, I developed my first bout of depression, and I was I was diagnosed at that point with severe clinical depression. And uh, uh, I basically, by grade 11, I dropped out of high school. Um, I, I eventually graduated high school later on in life when I was 19. I got all of my credits. but uh, So I was just staying at home, you know, like playing video games. I was like a big nerd back then. Then when I was 18, I was talking to my friend on like... Uh, what was it called? MSN. That's what we used to use, right? <laughs> Messenger. Yeah. So uh, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm suicidal. I was 18. He's like, just smoked some weed, man. Like, it makes people happy. So then, so then I smoked my first joint, you know, in the winter of, uh, I think, 2008. And eight. Yeah, a long time ago. 
And, uh, you know, like, it was great. I felt great. I felt relaxed. I felt calm. And uh, so basically, from that point, like, in my uh, later teens, I experimented a lot with drugs. I managed to complete high school despite the fact that I was using so many drugs. Because I always found school, like, really easy. And, uh, yeah, I started... um, started hustling like selling a bit of weed in my earlier years and uh that was fun i guess and uh so later on i started experimenting more with uh large doses of uh psychoactive compounds like psychedelics like what like like lsd lsd and uh magic mushrooms and a bit of mdma and like i had tried like cocaine maybe like once when I was 18 so I was more I was more into the psychedelics I was using way too much like the dosages were way too high and when I was late 1920 I kind of developed what they thought originally was bipolar right so I was I was in the psych ward a few times um I got in trouble with the law when I was like 19 or 20 and I was sent to prison and then the maximum security psych ward in Ontario. I think it's, I forgot what town it's in. I was put on quite a few medications and uh, I was basically shipped away to my dad's house. And I, I was trying to, I kind of have lived in Toronto on and off ever since. I really love the city. And so it didn't work out with my dad. Uh, I was, I was going through, uh, something called mental health court diversion, which basically is a program. If you haven't committed too much of a heinous crime, you can just, it's basically probation. They try to make sure you're not using drugs too much. You're on your meds, you're going to therapy, stuff like that, trying to get you more normalized. So it didn't work out with my dad. And I went to a safe bed, which I thought was great. You know, they gave you all the food you wanted. And like, I was anorexic before that. I wasn't really eating. I was doing a bunch of acid still. I had some acid left over from before I went to prison. And like, I kind of got, I kind of got a bit stable then. And I was just smoking weed. Uh, Where was was, the shelter bed? Okay, so this was a safe bed. I'll tell you what a safe bed is. This is something different. Uh, A safe bed is a place you can go if you got out of prison or something for a month, just to kind of get stable and get a new place. So Mm -hmm. I went through that. My caseworker then told me, because it was about 2021 20, at this point, that I should go to Covenant House, which is a youth shelter. You know, they really helped me. They got me they got me a job working in the kitchen there. I got an ODSP, so I had some income. And uh, after, after about, like, six months, I had my first apartment. Um, but when that happened, I... I think I was too free and I was too young. Like I was like 21. I was using a lot of drugs. I don't even really remember which ones, but a lot of shrooms and weed and like MDMA, a little bit of cocaine. And yeah, so I, I, I was in and out of the hospital, eventually got kicked out again. I went back to Covenant House when I was like maybe tw- 21 and a half. I was there for maybe like a year. I got the job in the kitchen again. I started, uh, I started um, going to a different program of Covenant's House, which is rites of passage. Which basically, I'll elaborate on that. Um, it's a program in which you pay money to the shelter, like a rent, basically, to get you prepared for life. But they put it in a savings account, so when you do move out, you have you know, a bunch of money to start your life, which is good for street kids. I think the program's great. And uh, it it, it helped me get back on my feet. So from there, uh, I think at this point, I'm like 20, 23. I get an apartment with subsidized housing uh, because I was young and I had mental health. I was able to get in kind of like a boarding house. Uh, I had my own room. And uh, I, was, I was very stable, but I was very depressed. And, like, I had long periods of times with sobriety and uh, not even smoking cigarettes sometimes. And, like, I would just keep it kind of to, like, weed, which kind of helped with my depression. And uh, I was working on and off. You know, I was occasionally 
you know, partying, it went well, like, again, psychedelics, a bit of cocaine, uh, stuff like that, but not, not like, all the time, and, uh, yeah, that went well, you know, I was working, doing well, I kind of had a life, and uh, I had some problems with my roommates and stuff, and then eventually I went manic again, hypermanic, um, and and can I, you describe what that's like for everyone who so, doesn't know? So basically, I have schizoaffective disorder, which is bipolar disorder, you know, mania and depression with mild schizophrenia and, uh, you know, psychosis with that magical thinking. So when I'm really sick, I kind of, I'm going to talk about that. So when I'm really sick, I kind of believe I am a Norse god. And usually when I'm sick, I think it's more like Loki, you know, kind of like a trickster, wily dude. It's just like manic as hell. You guys which, should look it up. Yeah, you know, L-O-K-I. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of fun when I'm like that, but, like, sometimes I don't take care of myself. You know, I'm using too many drugs. Like, I'm just going wild on the streets. Like, I'm, I'm messing with people, you know. Like, I'm trolling them. I don't know if you know what trolling is, but I just <laughs> I kind of do it on the streets, you know. Like, I just, like, get laughs at other people's expenses. I do that more when I'm sick and, like... I don't know, it's really fun to chill with Loki for a lot of people, but in small doses, because he kind of, you know, goes on with his speech a little too long and rants and stuff like that, and is really hyper. So, yeah, I don't know, like, um, basically, and right now I'd say I'm more in the John state, which is very, you know, stable and much more calm, maybe a little bit manic at times, but not like hyper manic, you know, more just like, mild bipolar like i'm medicated and stuff like that so where was i yeah so i was about it's about 24 25 and i started getting hypermanic i was using a lot um i was in and out of the hospital i met onika we were both manic and like i was making sure like giant white dudes weren't hurting her and stuff and i was like <laughs> writing a bible and like <laughs> You know, like, it, I was going off, and, like, I, I really thought I was God for a while. And then, uh, yeah, it was fun. And, you know, I met Anika. We've been friends for, like, two years. And, uh, yeah, it, it led me to briefly going to prison, or jail, I should say, again, because it was hypermanic and I was using a lot of drugs. I got kicked out of my subsidized apartment. And so I'm 26, 27-ish, and uh, probably 26. And then I moved back in with my mom. I'm really, like, for a while I was very manic and, like, going about Oshawa now, like, being low-key and stuff and just, like, messing around, getting drunk, you know, getting messed up, like... And uh, then, then it stopped, you know, like I had an injury, I became depressed, and uh, I was self-medicating with, uh, with cocaine for about six months straight, which I would use about a third of a gram a day, just like so afforded I had some inheritance, so I was just blowing that. And uh, I, got, I got off of it when, uh, when I broke up with a chick, and I'm just like, I'm going to stop using it. Um, you know, like, so in my past, like, I've gone, like, maybe, like, a year and a half without using it. Like, I think that point when I was, like, almost 27, that was probably the worst I was addicted to it. Like, it was every day just to kind of, like, stay awake. And cocaine? I, yeah, cocaine. That was, that's, that's probably the drug of choice that does me the most problems. It costs so much. You know, everyone wants lime. Like, it's just, it's not a good drug. And uh, I was using it, too, because I was smoking about a half ounce of weed a day. So, like, 14 grams of weed a day. And, uh, Holy shit. yeah, you know. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. so, I was really depressed. I was like, using a lot of my mom's house. It was dark times. And, yeah, so I got out out of that funk and I'm just like you know what I'm moving out I can't live with my mom anymore I'm getting older so I got a place in Scarborough when I was like 27 in October um basically that went well for a while I was just smoking weed I think I had maybe like five months kind it kind of clean kind of clean for me 
is just like drinking a bit and smoking a bit of weed um and yeah and that that winter i met aniko again we chilled for a bit and uh we caught up i was a bit manic of this state um i had lost my housing because there were five roommates and like i got in a huge argument with one of them i i got injured uh it was like self-induced but like by accident like i was cutting some food i was really angry about the situation like i uh stabbed my hand and uh yeah so so i went to the hospital they put me on delatas and uh what's a delata it's basically it's an opioid which is uh stronger than morphine and morphine is what they give to wow. people in the field you know like field injuries they generally give people morphine or like low doses of oxycodone right so it was quite painful my hand was like open and like i was getting antibiotics intravenous and intravenous opiates so i just decided while i was still healing i'm not going to be on them because i think i left out i had some opioid addiction in the past and i was really anti being on opioids then so i just dealt with the pain and it still hurts now and uh um yeah so that healed up i was homeless on and off in toronto i was just couch surfing I was fighting with my mom because of his using. I was always manic. And uh, yeah, now, now for the past like maybe five months, I've been doing a lot better. I've gradually been using less and less. Um, I've been getting along with my mom. Um, I, I'm pretty much a month kind of off of the kind of drugs that cause me a lot of problems and cause mania or extreme depression. So I'm doing well, and uh, I'm living with my mom, and I'm occasionally couch surfing in Toronto just to get out of Oshawa because I feel like, you know, Toronto. What's in Oshawa? <laughs> there's nothing in Oshawa, so I just come to <laughs> Toronto to have some fun, you know, and chill with my homies who all live in Toronto. And, yeah, like, I just, I feel like I've tried pretty much every drug except for, like, research chemicals and PCP. And I would say, you know, marijuana is probably the only one that should be used on a frequent basis. It can help with pain, which I have. It can help with mania, depression, um, cures cancer, apparently. Like, it shrinks tumors. Like, if, like nowadays I smoke, at, like, every other day, maybe, like, 0.5 of a gram, like, half a gram to a third of a gram. And... Yeah, I just, I use it when I need to, but I try not to use drugs every day nowadays. I try not to drink every day. And I'm very stable right now. I'm on a low dose of medication and I'm getting like, I'm getting along with my friends. Like I was, I was going too wild to chill with Onika. And, then and she, I want to talk about that for yeah, a second. Yeah. So John and I reconnected um, in April. It was super random. Um, I was in a coffee shop. I think you were at your chiropractors. You yeah, had your yeah, chiropractor yeah. appointment. And um, we just like bumped right into each other. And it was like no time had passed, but I could tell that he was, and I'm going to use the term in his illness. I know um, Julian has a thing with that term in me, but he was, he was in his illness. And I remember inviting him over and um, just hanging out. And you were hypermanic at the time. You were in the Loki uh stage and then I saw you maybe a week later and you were more depressed and I had to set for myself boundaries and ground rules for our associating with each other like I always want to help you when you're not well I always want to be there for you yeah. but I can't kind of have that in my personal environment yeah because like of my in, own small, doses, in yeah, small, small doses in small doses so whereas like I think this is the first time when you just met me when I've kind of been more like well mm -hmm. and uh I, I hope it's like refreshing, you know, like I, I feel is. like I'm a lot more normal. I'm still a little weird, but you know, like I'm not, I'm not going off about Norse gods. I'm not like pacing around. I'm not, you know, like doing a, yeah, a kind of joker settle, laugh yeah, all the time, you know, rules, like, so, so yeah, I'm doing really well now and, uh, yeah, we're friends again and it's, it's been cool, you know? 
All right, I got a few questions. Now this guy's like, I got some questions. I got some questions. I, I got I just, questions. I just have things that I just want. I've got I've this, that, these things you this conversation is brought up in. Mm-hmm. Go I just ahead. Got things Go ahead, I, got, I just wrote some things down. So um, self-medication is something that you've spoken about quite quite a bit. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to know your perspective. I know we had a conversation a bit earlier before the podcast where we talked about how sometimes self-medicating is the only thing that helps yeah and, like and i just, uh, sorry. I just want, I, i'm sorry i just want i just want sorry. to know is is it is it ever something that, that is there ever a time where you actually are able to communicate with your healthcare professionals oh i'm that, very open that that's your that's yourself that you're self-medicating and do you have a conversation with yeah, them saying yeah, that yeah. hey i'm doing this for this reason and do they ever come back and say well do you want to try something else for that well basically with my health team uh i i go to an addiction a psychiatrist and he's always told me you know like john you you aren't really addicted to anything except for weed and cigarettes uh because i don't i don't go out and and use something every day right like i'll just maybe on the weekend or you know like um when i have some more money or when i'm hanging out with friends it's more a social thing for most things but yeah i really self-medicate with marijuana and I feel, and there's a lot of research backing it up, that it's it's more of a medicine, you know. And I, I feel like, you know, self-medicating with, say, like alcohol or cocaine or heroin or crystal methamphetamine, if you have ADHD or whatever, like there are alternatives. Like I'll use my sister as an example. Uh, I hope she doesn't mind. She probably won't. She's very open about it. Uh, so she was, she has ADHD and that's part of the reason she was so abusive, uh, growing up. So we're getting along now. And, uh, for 10 years, she hid it from the family. She was on crystal meth and she would do this because it made her feel normal. Right. So now she went to the hospital, opened up about it, with the family and her care team. And they have her on a substance called Vyvanse, which is basically a legal, as opposed to methamphetamine, it's amphetamine, like Ritalin or something like that. And she's very stable, you know, she's a bit sped up in her speech, but she can focus, she can do tasks, like, so there are alternatives, so but like, oh, go ahead. yeah, yeah. Um, but I just feel like, you know, the way I, I love weed, you know, like, and I feel like it helps people as opposed to say these other drugs, which, you know, make you, you know, weird or sick or different, you know, like weed is just kind of like something to turn down with and just calm down and relax, you know? So I am, I'm for self-medicating with marijuana for multiple issues, but not other substances. I've done it, but it wasn't a good idea. You okay, know. so I guess ultimately what I'm trying to get to is that if you're self-medicating, please inform your healthcare professional so they at least are aware of everything that's going on with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, For, like, uh, they constantly ask me how much weed am I smoking if I'm using other drugs, and I'm honest with them. So then they can treat me accordingly and they understand why I'm acting the way I'm acting. Like, you should be open with your care team absolutely. about your use. Absolutely. And... and uh, you know, how you're feeling and like what you're going through, what you're thinking. Like, I, I think Onika was talking about, you know, being being a, a bullshitter. Like, I'm just an open book with so many people. Like, I'm a recovering addict. You know, I have mental illness. And yeah, I like to smoke weed, but it's going to be illegal soon. And, you know, it's less harmful to you than cigarettes, coffee mcdonald's or alcohol oh like you preach yeah. <laughs> well that leads me to my my next uh my next question which is um drugs and pop culture we spoke briefly yeah, before yeah. where you actually said that um you had been just prescribed xanax in the past i know that's something that's in like hip-hop music pop culture a lot now where it's it's, it's all Lord, out there and i mean and i mean like i know i had percocets when i had my wisdom teeth taken out and i will never touch that stuff ever again true um it got me way too high and i mean i've smoked a lot of pot and there's no comparison, There's no comparison um, with but Pakistan. drugs and pop culture how do you feel about all these you know i guess let's go hip-hop um artists um i guess promoting the use of these these antipsychotic drugs um and 
and all the other drugs that are used for for mental health okay. patients to help them. Let actually... me let me just hold you on there. Okay. So Xanax is classified as a benzodiazepine. It's not an antipsychotic. It's more sorry, but no, no, I, oh, I'm I not going to fight or anything. I, 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 no, no, but, uh, you, yeah, yeah. Let me pre- let me when preach. I'm wrong. Let me preach. When I'm wrong. Uh, so basically, benzodiazepines are originally created. Uh, to help people going through alcohol withdrawal because benzos are cross-tolerant with uh, alcohol. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And they were found to help with anxiety. So they're more an anxiety medication, right? And yeah, like your question, uh, I really think rappers should be telling these kids to, you know, maybe do some psychedelics or smoke some weed, not to like do heroin, cocaine, and... Xanax, like I'm not going to tell a 19 year old to do like you know coke or anything like that's like just like they're pillars of the community, and they should be preaching you know more helpful drugs you know that expand your mind because I'm all about mind expansion and meditation and stuff as opposed to things that are devolving you like Xanaxes like heroin like cocaine and uh, yeah and I mean. You know, MDMA is great if you dose it correctly, but rappers aren't doing a medical dose. They're doing like a half gram and just wiling out on some lean and taking Xanax and then they're overdosing. Like, and, and freaking, like, I, I'm, I've talked to like some like earlier 20s people, like I'm 28, and they're just like, yeah, like I love Xanax, I love Molly, you know, I love Coke, and I'm just like, do some shrooms, you know, smoke some weed, like, <laughs> chill out, you know. <laughs> oh my god. So what psychedelic do you subscribe to? Okay, magic mushrooms are my favorite. I've done I've done dimethyltryptamine, which is the most intense psychedelic known to man. And it got me through a lot of my issues, to be honest. Like I find if I do if I don't abuse the psychedelics, um, I feel refreshed the next day. My depression isn't as bad, and you know I'm ready to take on. We are my not life. promoting the use. We are of not promoting any use drugs psychedelic right for any but of a well, non doctor prescribed this is, this is just the sharing of an experience. Yes. Yeah, like this is just what I personally believe for myself. I wouldn't don't try this at home, kids. But yeah, I've had some very positive uh, associations with psychedelics, and a lot more negative with what I consider the harder drugs, you know, like there's, they cost more, they do more damage in your body, they make you sicker. Whereas, you know, like, especially magic, like I would really say magic mushrooms and they're doing some research kind of to say, you know, like this is for PTSD therapy. I have PTSD and uh, depression. And I actually think Canada has legalized ketamine for uh depression like really? for tre- yeah like uh my sister was saying when she was on the site work recently they're, they're giving people ketamine which was done in the uk for depression and it's 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 kind of like a psychedelic it's wait ketamine is not the tranquilizer that's the yeah. horse the, tranquilizer. It's, it's horse tranquilizer but okay. it has psychedelic effects okay in the right dosage okay so we're giving people if you give people medical dosages of psilocybin which is the main component of uh, magic mushrooms or say MDMA at a medical dosage for say PTSD or autism and you know ketamine for depression which is happening at St. Michael's Hospital um, you know it can help you know I think some street drugs have some beneficial Qualities if used in the right dose in the right setting. That's why they became street drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> For the most they're part. fun, but they help <laughs> they, you they, get they through. Pro- they probably so. had they had a real purpose, but at yeah. one point, at one and point, then we someone... as human beings decided to abuse it. Yeah, and absolutely. make it illegal. Like all this stuff was legal in like yeah. the nineteenth century, and then the war on drugs happened. You can't monet. You don't want people. You know, can't monetize it if. Uh, if weed's growing in your backyard, people can't get Yeah, back, like, get if, if we're all growing weed, then it's, it's a free. Weed. Everyone yeah. will just give each other weed for free, and then we're a happier society, you know? That's that's what I'm saying. So I want to actually go back to something that you spoke, you, you kind of glazed over twice. Um, your mental health experience in prison, what was that like? Oh, it was horrible. Um, the first time was worst. 
because I was on a heavy dose of psychedelics. Like I, I really overdid it. I overdid LSD. I did like 10 tabs, which is a, a tab is a single dose. Um, and they were heavy, heavy tabs. Like they may have been in the thousands of micrograms each. Like I got them from an artist and like I was, I was tripping balls for like two weeks and I was getting beat up in prison. It made my PTSD way worse. And like I got out and like, yeah, it was horrible. I was going, I was crazy. Like that's, that's what I call myself. I'm like hypermanic and on LSD in, you know, like a cell where like the guards would come in and beat the shit out of me and try to inject me with like, you know, antipsychotics and stuff. It wasn't a good scene. And it kind of it kind of changed me a lot, you know. Maybe like I'm afraid of police, you know, because like if I wild out too much, you're gonna send like nine, ten guys to tackle me to the ground because you know I'm a big guy. Like I'm He's big. I, I'm over six feet tall, and like mm-hmm. like I just spook people out. But like you know I'm not gonna hurt anybody. It's just they they use that force because like they have to, you know. Wow. That's interesting that you look at it from that perspective. I've been um, I've been stopped by some some cops before. Cops have had to pick me up to take me to the hospital because yeah. I'm doing stupid, random, hypermania type of shit. And it, I've been like roughed up. Like I remember one yeah. time I was pretty I was pretty roughed up, and then you get there, you're locked up in the hospital, and you have to deal with security. The security yeah. sucks. Security's like, the worst. No, like, when the, nur- when the nurse says, like, you're wilding too much, I'm like, you gotta get strapped in the bed. And, yeah, like, then I, then I fight out. them. I fight them because I don't want to be strapped up. Like, I just want to walk does. around, you know? Like, like so. nobody does. So, yeah, like, yeah. Um, prison wasn't good. And when you're mentally ill, it's, it's not a good place to be. Like, I, I think, like, it, as long as you're not, like, overly aggressive like i was even told by the person who called the cops and be like i wanted you to go to the psych ward to get help not to go to prison right and yeah like i feel like if it's a mental health issue someone should be sent to the psych ward if they're not like you know attacking someone hurting someone in any way you know it should be handled by mental health i think prison should be more for the the incredibly violent crimes, you know. So that's kind of my view. Yeah, I um, I completely agree. I know there's a mental health unit in Toronto. There was one in Durham. My mom had the phone number, so um, I I completely I completely agree with you. It should be dealt with in a different way. But um, right now it is what it is, and hopefully, you know, podcasts like this will incite some change. Um, but John, do you have anyone you want to say hi to before we sign off? Okay. Um, let me think. Uh, <laughs> big ups to my boy, Johnny. Um, my sister, uh, Little Money Bean. Um, this is not else? an award show. Captain, right? Captain Chronic, Jesus Christ, you know, and my mom, my dad, even though he won't talk to me, uh, all my family out there that's it all right all right um well if you guys would like to connect with john talk to him more about his experience with mental health and addiction um or just shoot him a line to say hi and tell him you support him on his journey uh jr please tell them how they can reach all of us you can definitely reach uh you can reach all of us at uh dish d-y-s-h at dainty dish.com that's d-a-i-n-t-y d-y-s-h dot com uh, the daintydish.com website is going through an upgrade. It should be revealed shortly. 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 Coming shortly, soon. Shortly, coming soon. Um, hopefully, the same day as this uh, episode. Uh, yeah, and you can also check Onika out on her website, onikadainty.com, for more writing, poetry. And you've got some, you're starting to write some things that I appreciate now. I mean, uh, you're, 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 you're showing some really good, good stuff. Thanks. I just wrote a piece on why I didn't report that whole um, situation going on in the United States. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think it's an interesting piece. So if you guys want to check it out, onikadainty.com. Yeah. And then listen to our episode from two weeks ago as well, because we also talk about why you didn't report as well. Yeah. 
Um, you can also check out Onika on Instagram, uh, Best of Onika. You can check her out on Twitter at, uh, I think it's Onika Dainty. Yes, at Onika Dainty. Yeah, you can check her out on Twitter at, at Onika Dainty. She's finally saying something that's relevant. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and yeah, you can check me out on Instagram, Best of JR. Um, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five. You deserve a five. Yeah, we, we truly appreciate you listening and tuning in. Um, if you're listening to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, or any other platform, we truly appreciate you. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the notes. We are listening. We do read them. And that's why we are getting a bit more serious because we did read your feedback and we truly appreciate it. That's enough for me. Well, All that's right. It for me. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, John, tr- we're, we're going to have you back because we want to. Yeah, we, want we, our, we enjoyed more, this. We enjoyed this. And there's still some more things on my list to talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. Well, that has been the dish of the day. I hope y'all have yourselves a very, very, very happy holiday.